Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our night prayer from St Andrew's Church, Horton the Skern, this evening. Our order of service this evening will be taken from the Worship at Home booklet, and our readings are going to be Psalm 148, a reading from Acts chapter 17, verse 15, and then verses 22 to the end. And finally, a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. So we begin our night prayer with the familiar verse from Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So we spend a moment to pause, just to stop and reflect on the day that's passed. Perhaps think about the people that you've met up with, people that you've talked to on the phone, things that you've done today. Just bring them before the Lord. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created, and he established them for ever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendour is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, the people close to his heart. And we say together, Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. In this psalm we hear how the whole of creation praises the Lord, the sun, the moon, the stars, all the animals are praising the Lord. Whatever our circumstances, this psalm causes us to focus to focus our praise on God, our Creator and Redeemer. It is good to praise the Lord.
Our next reading is from Acts chapter 17, verses 15, and then verses 22 to the end. This reading takes place as Paul is in Athens. Paul is speaking to the Areopagus at Athens. The Areopagus was the city council, if you like, and he is speaking to people of influence. So Acts chapter 17, starting with verse 15. Those who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. And now jumping to verse 22. Paul then stood up at the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he gives himself, gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people, people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul had the ability to speak to people in a way that made the message of God relevant to them. He had the ability too to get to the heart of an issue. Here he is speaking to very religious people. After all, they even worship an unknown God. Being religious all by itself is useless. It might make us feel that we are better people than we are, but it does not bring us closer to God. Paul's message to the Athenians is the same message to everyone today. God commands all people everywhere to repent. So let us turn away from the things which God abhors and let us ask for his forgiveness. Jesus will not let us down. Our gospel reading this evening is from John chapter 16 
verses 12 to 15. And Jesus is speaking to his disciples. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is preparing his disciples for a time when he will not be with, with them. He will not be there to guide them and help them. Instead, he promises the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. In all things, when we are struggling, when we are finding it difficult to make a decision, let us ask the Holy Spirit for help. And if we listen, the Spirit of Truth will guide us on the right path. And we come now to our time of prayer. So let us pray. We start with a prayer from the Church of England website, the prayer for today. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ has gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Lord, we bring before you those we know who are not well. We pray especially for those who are on our church prayer list this month. John Adamson, Leslie Stegner, Douglas Butt, Violet Hardy, Margaret Britton, Heather Rookley, Diane Collins and Karen Storey. There may be others that you know of as you're listening. Just bring them to the Lord in prayer now. Lord, we offer up these people to you and we ask you to place your healing hands on them. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This month we're praying for the bereaved families and friends and colleagues of Ken Chapman and Mary Hall. We ask you, Lord, to be with them and to give them comfort. As we regularly pray for members of our congregation and for people around the parish, today we pray for all those who live in Merrifield Way and Nairn Grove. And we hold up to you, Lord, Robert and Charmaine Gormley. Lord, we ask you to bless these people and we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue our prayers with the prayers from the booklet. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be present, O most merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Visit our homes, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. 
May your holy angels dwell with us in peace and may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. In the last few sentences, as we draw our time with the Lord to a close. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. May the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. So thank you for joining us this evening and please join us again tomorrow and every evening at 7pm. I wish you all the best for the rest of the evening. Good night and God bless.